Um, Michael Balkan was a visionary producer whose legendary productions with Alfred Hitchcock and whose glorious Ealing comedies have become part of our national heritage. In his name, I have the honour to present this year's award for outstanding British contribution to cinema. It goes to an achievement in British cinema which has created a British film industry within the British film industry that has entertained more millions around the world than any other, um, I'm going to have to use the horrid word, than any other franchise in recent memory. One of the most remarkable phenomena of our time was the bursting into the world of boy wizard Harry Potter. In the pages of J.K. Rowling's seven novels, the Harry Potter cycle became the most successful literary series of our time. Perhaps of all time, new words entered the language. Hogwarts, Muggle, Quidditch, Mudblood. Characters like Harry, Ron, Hermione, Dumbledore, Snape, and Voldemort, who mustn't be, oh damn, I named him. Uh, <laughs> they made an indelible mark in the imagination of millions of adults and children the world over. Could such an unprecedented and astounding phenomenon ever be translated to the screen? Well, with a total of 28 BAFTA nominations and the final instalment still to come, the Harry Potter series has shown British filmmaking in its very best light. Dramatically dazzling, technically breathtaking, internationally record-breaking. At the heart of the film's appeal is the fact that no matter how much money they make, and believe me, it is a shed load, <laughs> the Harry Potter movies all seem to have been crafted with an attention to detail and a love which bespeaks genuine care and affection. So successfully, inventively and faithfully have the Harry Potter movies transferred J.K. Rowling's vision to the screen that some have suggested, sacrilege though it may seem, that the films may actually be better than the quite brilliantly voiced audiobooks. Let's, um, <laughs> let's, hear, let's hear from some of the people who helped make the on-screen magic happen. Ten years ago, in the heart of Leavesden, England, something magical happened. Mr. Potter. An entire generation has watched as Harry and his friends came of age on screen. The films have captured the imagination of audiences young and old. It's the sort of thing that only happens every, every few generations. The Harry Potter franchise has been one of the most successful series of films ever made. I think it's, it's been amazing for British cinema. Harry Potter has been the highest gross film franchise ever. The first time on the set, it was, of course, incredibly impressive. It's the attention to detail on the films that I think makes them special. The Great Hall has real stone floors and that's really important for actors. It's like, yes, I'm really here. The book was a phenomenon and it just touched the imaginations of children all over the world. Everyone will please not panic. Well, the cast was uh, like the who's who of British actors, really. I mean, everybody's been in it, more or less. Merlin Beard! Our cast is ridiculous. When I look back on everyone that we've had involved, it's amazing. The amount of uh, foreign currency that comes in from a really successful British film is absolutely staggering. It really is. We're talking about billions of pounds from China, from France, from India, from all over the world. I mean, it's created thousands of jobs for people, fabulous jobs. And I think it's been remarkable that we managed to make it here and that 
we could draw on all the talent that we have behind the camera and in front of the camera and that hopefully it will encourage filmmakers in the future to go, we can do this huge vast project, we can do it. Well, the BAFTA, of course, is presented to the Harry Potter films and to accept, well, J.K. Rowling and David Warner, I guess. Here we are, David Heyman. Here we are. And Rupert Grint and Emma Watson. Hey. Thank you. On behalf of the over 6,000 people who worked on each of the films, I'd like to say a huge thank you to BAFTA for this great honor. Over the past decade, oh, here come the directors and producer, David Barron. Sorry, come on up. There weren't any quicker shooting either. <laughs> um, it's over the past decade, we've had the privilege of working with some of the finest people working today in an atmosphere filled with pride, but with no ego. Working on glorious fiction created by Joe Rowling. Thank you. We created a fam we became a family of sorts. Um, we had an awful lot of fun. Um, personally, I'd like to say a few thank yous. Um, I'd like to thank our directors, Chris Columbus, who isn't here, Alfonso, Cu Alfonso Cuaron, who's hiding over there. Mike Newell. David Yates. Producer David Barron. Our screenwriters, Steve Clovis and Michael Goldenberg. Our amazing cast, Dan, Rupert, Emma, and a host of others, and our incomparable crew. And last but not least, oh, and of course, sorry, having been named David Warner, I do feel it's appropriate that I thank <laughs> Warner Brothers, <laughs> who, um, who have been the very best partners one could ever ask for have been supportive financially, creatively, and in every which way could possibly imagine. And last but not least, I want to thank Joe Rowling, who's... Are you hiding behind me, Joe? Come on. Um, I'd, like to thank... <clears throat> I'd like to thank Joe Rowling for encouraging parents and children to share the pleasure of reading and to give us the opportunity to bring her wonderful fiction to life. Thank you. It's, it's very strange to look back after seven films and remember how wary I was of letting anyone put Harry on the big screen. And I kept saying no, and it was David Heyman, not Warner. David Heyman, who persuaded me, and he's been there from start to finish. So tonight, I really need to say publicly how right I was to trust him, how much I owe him, how grateful I am to him. And to say that being involved in these films has been one of the best experiences of my life, and particularly being involved with these wonderful people standing behind me. So thank you, David, and thank you very much to the Academy. From all of us, thank you.
Take that, Twilight. <laughs> Great too. Uh, and now our fourth nominee for Best Film. The story of a young woman who tries to achieve her dream of becoming a world-class ballet dancer. It's more than just flash dance for toffs. It's the howling, yet beautiful, Black Swan. I had the craziest dream last night about a girl who was turned into a swan. She needs love to break the spell, but her prince falls for the wrong girl, and she kills herself. So many interesting things about Swan Lake, the ballet. The white swan and the black swan both played by the same dancer. Our new swan queen, the exquisite Nina Sayers. 